Now we will um, have a little bit of a, like a deeper dive. It is not a, a very deep dive, by the way. It's just it's actually sufficient. It's good amount of, of, of knowledge that you need to know about bid'ah, what it is, and and so on, um, to be able to protect yourself and others from the wrong concepts. So we are going to talk about the concept of bid'ah. Okay. So what is meant by bid'ah in the hadith that we talked about? So as we said. The, uh, the bid'ah in the hadith is not in general in its general meaning or it is not literal that anything new, anything innovation in religion is bad and, and is error. That concept and that understanding contradicts the sharia, contradicts the hadith, contradicts the prophet action himself and everybody's, all the scholars. So we have two schools actually. If if like if you if you can say the other is a, is a is a proper school, but anyway, um, uh, there is a school of all renowned scholars and imams since the Sahaba until now that differentiate between good and bad bid'ah, which is basically the the good bid'ah. There is a good bid'ah which is in line and promote Sharia. It's in line with the Sharia. It doesn't go against Sharia principles. And it may even promote it. So this is a, a very good bid'ah. This is a good bid'ah. You are promoting Sharia. Even if it doesn't promote, but it's, it doesn't go against the Sharia, the Sharia, then it's allowable. It's permissible. So that's the school. Okay. The other school of, 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 of thought about what bid'ah means, the concept of bid'ah, it's actually a new school that started maybe some decades ago. Uh, decades ago. That <clears throat> that school. Um, perceives the word bid'ah <coughs> as any innovation whatsoever. Anything that um, there is no hadith that sh says that the Prophet did it or made it, it is bid'ah, it is innovation, it's wrong, it's error, it is dalal. Right? So they take وَكُلُّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ like absolutely general. Right, so this school goes or goes against and contradicts the Sharia and the Sahaba and every scholars, uh, uh, like uh, imams uh, that we uh, that like followed imams, um, as we as we said. So we're going to give a little bit of examples of good bid'ah, right? Again, as I said before, I'm not sure if I said that in this uh, course or maybe in the Aqidah course. Um, I'm inviting you to verify and validate and check everything I say. Okay, so when I say there are good beta and bad beta, you shouldn't just take the, take that away and say, okay, that's correct. You need to ask me why. What is your proof? What is your evidence for saying that? So my evidence, and it's not my evidence actually, it is like the scholars. What the scholar says, um, there are several incidents where the Sahaba made innovations, made new things, introduced new things religious things in the Sharia, and the Prophet accepted, not, not just accepted them, the Prophet basically um, demonstrated, whether by saying or by acceptance, that those newly introduced things by the Sahaba were acceptable and accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even before the Prophet says, yeah, that's good or that's bad. And um, examples of those, uh, what Khubayb? Khubayb is a Sahabi who had been taken prisoner by the by Quraysh and uh, got executed. And basically, so Khubayb invented two raka'ah before getting killed. It became a sunnah, an acceptable sunnah. The Sahaba, the Sahaba and the Prophet accepted that if a, a Muslim person being taken like a prisoner or something of, of war uh, by, by the army, by the enemy of the other side, and they were going to execute him, he prays, he make wudu and prays to Raqqa. Okay, so this is an event. Khubayb is, is a great Sahabi, and when he took the to, he, the, the Quraysh to, uh, took him and put him in prison, the prison um, the guard came to him once and found uh, grapes and found him eating grapes, and this guard says he became Muslim after that. He says there were no grapes. In, in the entire area, in, in Mecca at all, there was no grapes at all. You cannot find grapes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created grapes for him and passed him to pass it to him as a karama. And this is also another 
is, is this is in al-Bukhari and it is another example of karama uh, the, the, the action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives or make uh, to, to the awliya his awliya because a lot of people say um, if there were such an awliya or, or karama now uh, to some some like uh, great scholars why that didn't happen to a sahaba actually it happened to a sahaba happened a lot but it was normal they didn't really talk about it much and that was one of, of this this example so this, this is uh, uh, like a, a second thing that we take from this uh, uh, incident, right? So Khubayb radiallahu anhu arda uh, invented two rak'ah before getting executed and it is a sunnah acceptable, no problem whatsoever. <coughs> also, Bilal invented two rak'ah after wudu. The Prophet said, Ya Bilal, how come every time I go to Jannah, right? I see Al Jannah, I hear your, your steps. How come? Bilal said, I don't know prophet, old prophet, but the only thing that I do, really, that you didn't told, told me to do, is I, uh, after every wudu, I pray to rak'ah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nafila, tatawah, involuntarily. There is no some, such thing that the prophet asked them to do. The prophet said, yeah, accepted it. But the, the, the deeds of it, and the, 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 like, the reward, was granted to Bilal, even before the prophet, Tell him anything because the Prophet says, How come that I hear your steps in Jannah? So that he is already in Jannah and the Prophet hears his steps in Jannah, right? Um, and of course, that's like in uh, um, <clears throat> there is something called Kashf. The Prophet, like the Prophet, sees things and hears things um, like. Of, of things that was going to happen later and so on. Like when he was praying and he saw Al-Ganna, he saw al he saw everything that's going to happen and he told the, the, the Sahaba about a lot of things that will happen and so on. Okay, and also there is another hadith that says, the Prophet basically saying, he who makes a good sunnah has its deeds and the deeds of those who repeats it. So if you made something, a good sunnah that's good, you take their deeds for that, and everybody that follows that actually takes a, gets also another deed without affecting your your deed. And likewise, like the repeat, the completion of, of the the hadith was, and he who makes a bad sunnah or a bad an evil thing, he has its punishment and every, the punishment of everybody else who who does it. Like for example, the uh, the brother of of uh, the son of of Adam. Right, and this hadith is narrated by Muslim, and with the same meaning is also in Al Bukhari on, uh, and in so many other books of Sunnah. So this hadith here has even a higher weight than the hadith of Al Bid'ah. So even if you don't want to uh, put the two hadith together al to align and understand it, you should actually not follow the other one. You should follow that one because that one has a more a higher weight, a higher evidence. Higher, higher acceptable level um, as a hadith. Uh, another example of good bid'ah after the Prophet, peace be upon him, gathering the Quran and collecting it in one book. That's a bid'ah. Taraweeh congregation. And the, uh, Umar ibn Khattab did that. That didn't happen uh, by the Prophet time. And the Umar ibn Khattab basically gathered the, the people for taraweeh. And when he entered the masjid and saw it, he said, Ni'mal bid'atu hadi. What a good bid'ah this is. And Umar also did, uh, made like the tarweeh rak'ah, 20 rak'ah. Again, that was invention. So um, moving on, let's talk about some scholars' categorization of bid'ah, basically. Imam Shafi'i says explicitly and very clearly, bid'ah could be a good one or a bad one. Right? And Imam Shafi'i, is from a Salaf. He died 205, I think, or 204, something like that. So he is from Salaf al Salih. And here we go. Bid'ah could be good, could be bad. Imam al Nawawi said in his explanation of this hadith, in the uh, uh, like commentary and explanation of Muslim, this is a specified general, Aam Makhsus, type of Sharia law. Okay, so if you study Usul al Fiqh, you'll, you'll see that the scholars looked at every single rule and, and hukm and order and basically categorized things together, 
right? With all the evidence around it. And one of the types of order or, or Sharia law is something called specified general. I'm going to explain it a little bit further or giving you more examples after this. But basically, Imam Nawawi is saying, okay, this hadith, this order or this hadith, this statement is specified general, which meaning most bedas are error. The scholars, are, and he continues, the scholars said, bid'a is five categories. Wajib, which is mandatory. Mandub, like mustahab, is preferable. Haram, uh, not, uh, forbidden. Makruh, which is like hateful or, or not, um, yeah, not good. And mubah, permissible. And also he continues, example of wajib is structuring proofs of Kalam scholars to refute atheists and innovators in religion and the likes. So all the, the ulum, all the, the knowledge of, of, of Sharia, uh, whether Kalam or uh, even Hadith, like Ilm Mustalah al-Hadith, the science of Hadith, is invention. Those terminologies, Hadith Sahih, Hadith Da'if, uh, Hassan, all those are inv innovation. <clears throat> so uh, Imam now is saying example of, of bid'ah that is wajib, wajibah, you have to do it is structuring proofs of kalam and proof of, of like ilm al-tawheed and ilm al-aqeedah to refute atheist challenges and mubtari'ah like the other sects who, who made innovation in religion like Mu'tazilia and so on and Mandub is like building schools and dedicated areas of, uh, or places for religious, re religious purposes. Ar-Rubat, ar 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 yani you, you dedicate area, this is for this, this for that, and so on. He's just giving an example of, of something that is Mandub. And then he continued, he said, uh, the other categories are clear, so he didn't give examples for. But basically, you can see from here how the scholars, the true scholars, the real scholars who were very knowledgeable, who, who, who spend all of their life learning and teaching and like doing a great deal of, of, of serving to, uh, to Islam. This is how they think about this hadith. Now, let's uh, give an, another example of specified general, just to, so, to, to see that the scholars don't just invent names without, without any substance. There is a meaning, there is a substance, but as a terminology, just so that it's easy to be taught as a, as a, as a ilm and easy to be um, like um, documented and so on, they gave them names, right? Just like you have a name to make it easier for everybody to, to deal with you. Those things in Sharia that they combined, uh, they gave them, their, them names that can like uh, have a clue or something so that you understand what is meant by it. But anyway, um, a specified general, we find that in the Quran, like a lot. One example, قال الله تعالى سبحانه وتعالى فيه آيات بينات مقام إبراهيم ومن دخله كان آمنا ولله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيلا Look at ولله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيلا is basically saying whoever enters um, a pilgrimage to this house, Kaaba, is an obligation by Allah upon whoever is able among the people. There's a translation. But the literal meaning of an-nas, the, the word an-nas means everybody. So al-ayah here, the, the, the order was basically general. The word meaning in its in isolation, general meaning, unless every single person, everybody, that what the nest means. Okay. However, what is meant by it is not everybody, it is a group of those everybody, it's just one group, and that group is a group of everybody that is able to do it. So there is a condition that has been added to the word which narrowed down the meaning. Okay. So the word is, is, is general, but because of other clues, other evidence, other thing, based on that, we, we understood that the meaning here is not everybody, is, is not general, is, it's narrowed down to mean specific, more specific group or more specific meaning. 
Okay, that's why it is a specified general. It's a general in the word, but it's specified in the meaning, with a specific group in the meaning. And there are a lot of other examples, like الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ The people told them, uh, the people, the other people uh, combined or, or, or has gathered uh, an army for you. But the people who, who actually told them this uh, is only one person, Nu'aym ibn Mas'ud. So it's basically after Uhud, just one person went to the Prophet to the Sahaba and told them, be aware, beware, there are other, they are basically gathering to, to come back to you. And uh, the ayah said, Anas qalu. It is it's not Anas, it's one person. And actually, this is Am Am Maksus. Am Urid Wil Khsus. That's a different, different concept. So there is, there is a specified general, Am Maksus, which is that one. And the other one we just said is Am Urid Wil Khsus, which is general, uh, but meant, um, meant something else. Um, so in this type specified general, we take the word. And we look on the other evidence, we look at what the Prophet did, what the Sahaba and how the Sahaba understood it, the other hadith, and so on. And based on the other evidence, we narrow down the, the general and the meaning. So I, I, want to, I want to take a moment to talk about tashaddud, because as you can see, the, the tashaddud of the second school about like everything is haram, everything, innovation is bad, and so on and so forth. That's an extremism, and it's basically the extreme side of the, the, the like there is a spectrum of very uh, like um, uh, tashaddud on that side and being too lenient, lenient and uh, letting go everything on the other side. So the, the, our religion is balanced. It's not that and it's not this. So that view would just, the, the only thing that this view will help or will, will cause is making Muslims' life miserable. Everything is haram, everything is bad, because there are a lot of innovations as we, as we move on. Um, and this leads to Islam shrink into like certain area, and it, it become, Islam becomes inapplicable to the entire world. It doesn't make Islam expand. So it goes against a principle of, of balag, of Tabligh al-da'wah, and making sure that people know the true meaning or the, the true da'wah of Islam. And um, people under that, like understanding, they, they most often just leave religion. And also, as you, you must be aware, uh, a lot of, of people who uh, challenge Islam and challenge, challenge religion take such views and attack Islam with it. Um, so uh, th th this is the importance or, or the, the dangers of such understanding of text and scripture. And uh, I'm going to show you now a, a, like a detailed example of um, even those scholars who said or who took the meaning of the bid'ah, kulli bid'atin dalalaf in, in the religion as, a, as an error, they didn't actually apply that. So they, they say that, but they didn't do it. Okay? So they say everything that has been innovated in religion is bid'ah. So to be consistent with what they say, they should actually follow that. They actually should apply that, but they didn't. And I'm going to show you that. So this is a table I compiled a long time ago. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't have time to translate it to uh, English, but uh, I'm going to go through it now and and basically translate it as we go. Um, so we have here some of the, the uh, shiuch, the scholars that uh, took the second school thought that we talked about. And uh, I respect them. I pray for those who died of them to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive him and, and uh, pray for all of them. Um, but we have to distinguish between these great people as, as persons uh, and between um, the, the, uh, the ilm and the, what they left behind, which cause uh, like chaos in the in Sharia and in the uh, ahkam uh, area, uh, sphere, like understanding of, of texts and so on. Right, so um, the first item we have here is kissing the mushaf. 
you have the mushaf, you read it, and you after you read it, you basically kiss the mushaf. Uh, Sheikh Ibn Baz rahimahullah said that jays permissible. Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah says that's bid'ah, error, wrong. Even though Akrima, which is a Sahabi, did that. Sheikh uh, Al Albani rahimahullah said also bid'ah. Al Lagna al Da'ima, this is basically like a, a committee in the uh, uh, a committee which include some of these and others, said bid'ah. Uh, Sheikh Al-Fawzan, um, uh, uh, he's still alive, Atallah fi umri fi fi afiyah, wa hadahu Allah ila al-haqq da'iman, insha'Allah, qal, he has two, two opinions. Um, in his old opinion, he said, jais, permissible, and new opinion, he said, it's a bid'ah. Uh, the second item here is Maharib al-Masajid. Maharib al-Masajid is uh, the niche in the Qibla where, you know, it goes inside the, the Masjid. Um, Sheikh Ibn Baz said, Jaiz, permissible. Ibn Uthaymeen, permissible. Albani, bid'ah. And that's why ISIS, those in the, like, in Syria and who took areas of, in Syria and this area, when they went into the, the masajid they they demolished the maharib niche because according to al sheikh al-albani rahimahullah it's a <coughs> um, and here it says permissible all right so of course kissing al-mushaf and making niche in al-maharib is permissible but both these two items and everything here actually is uh, according to their own definition Bid'ah. So it should be, all should be bid'ah. All this should be read. All, everything should be read. But they didn't say it's bid'ah. So they didn't apply their own rule. Dua khitm al-Quran fi salah. So uh, while you are praying, you finished, usually you do that in, in uh, Taraweeh, and we, when we finish uh, the, the, the Quran, we do khatma. In the prayer, we do dua. So again, that's invention. Uh, Sheikh Ibn Ba'ath said Jaiz, Ibn Uthaymeen, Bid'ah, Albani, Bid'ah, Al-Fawzan, Jaiz, Ibn Jibreen, Jaiz. All right? Asha' al-Walidayn. It's something basically common in some, some uh, uh, countries. Takhsis yawm al-Jum'a li ziyarat al-Maqabir. So basically, taking yawm, uh, the, the assigning Jum'a to visit, <coughs> to visit the, uh, the graves. Bid'ah. Bid'ah, Bid'ah, Jaiz. Al-Masbaha, the Sibha. Jaiz in the new opinion. He had two opinions. In the new opinion, it's permissible. Ibn Uthameen, Jaiz. Al-Bani, Bid'ah. Al-Fawzan, Bid'ah. Ibn Jibril, Jaiz. Tikar al-Umrah fi Ramadan. Making more than one Umrah in Ramadan. Jaiz, Bid'ah. Jaiz, Jaiz. Bid al-Mahafil bi qara'at al-Quran. Starting the conferences on the, like, like the, Gatherings with Quran, re reciting Quran before the gatherings and so on. Ibn Uthaymeen Bid'ah. Al Albani Jaiz. Al Fawzan Jaiz. And this is the only one in here that Al Albani said Jaiz. Which is, and again, that's, that's invention. So even Al Albani, which is, who actually were the most consistent of all of them, came here and allowed it and this is not like everything there are other which i didn't look into i gathered these from a book um called uh, al bid'a i don't remember the name of the book now uh, as i said that was a long time ago i just wanted to share it share it with you um so this is only for what we we like those those issues but that doesn't mean there are other there, are, there aren't other items where they also had different opinions, okay? Uh, so as you are reciting Quran, you, you might like do do tamayl, do like that, or like that as, as you are reciting with the melody. Not dancing, of course not dancing, but just tamayl. Tamayl was inclining. Decline and incline, something like that. Um, so Ibn Uthaymeen Jais, 
اللجنة الدائمة بدعة and اللجنة الدائمة as I said is, is formed by ابن باز ابن عثمين الباني but it has like a some consensus to, to, to say or, or their own opinion maybe on the majority of the, the scholars uh, in the لجنة or in the committee I'm, I'm not sure how it works القراءة من المصحف في الصلاة as you are praying you read from المصحف permissible permissible بدعة permissible permissible احتفالات حفاظ القرآن ceremony of people حفاظ when somebody make حفظ and you know you, you make a gathering you make a ceremony you make a احتفال ابن عثيمين جائز بدعة بدعة جائز okay just some examples to show that to show you that um, um, like the the understanding of the bid'ah as categorized by Imam al-Shafi'i and by Imam al-Nawawi and all the other scholars, this will just uh, one example, all the other great scholars of Ummah, <coughs> there, there, there is a good bid'ah, there is a bad bid'ah. And those who deny that and say, no, no, bid'ah is bad, is bad, and every bid'ah is bad, not only they contradict the, the extensive evidence against their opinion, but also they don't apply it for themselves. They apply it on others, but not onto themselves. So I hope this is clear. And um, let's go to the Q&A if everybody has, a, has questions.